behold, two of them were traveling the same day to the village called Enemas, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they walked together and all these things which has happened. They talked together and they were conversating all the things that just happened with Jesus just got resurrected and they were doubting that he was resurrected. Um, uh, number 13 or 15. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so they did not know that it was him. Let me give you a little bit background story to those who are new to the Bible. Um, so what happened before this event, these two men were coming from Jerusalem to a small city. But before that, what happened was Jesus came on this earth. He had disciples. He had crowds. He had miracles. They, these guys have seen him heal the blind, the lame walking, the leprosy being cleansed. And he saw all the, they saw all these miracles that have happened in this time. He saw him multiplying bread. I mean, it was amazing and incredible. And it, they were part of this clique. They were part of this group. It felt like maybe again, maybe for the first time, they felt like they belonged somewhere. Somebody gave them an attention. Somebody felt like they were loved and so what began to happen in their life even though Jesus said that I'm going to be crucified I'm going to have to you know be crucified for the sin of the world and this is what he said but we were hoping that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel they had hopes they had future he promised them that when I leave that you guys will do great and amazing things they were hoping that he was going to be the one that's going to save their city but something happens in their life and Jesus dies. When Jesus was crucified on a cross, their hope was crucified on a cross. Their dreams, their future, their plans, maybe even like the things that Jesus said they were going to be doing, they were all crucified with him. It seemed like in the story because they are doubting and they are walking away from Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is the place that Jesus said, I want you to wait for me in Jerusalem. Do not leave the city because I'm coming back. But they decided to go fishing. They decided to go home, pack up their bags, gone fishing. This evening I want to ask you, what are the crosses in your life? The cross of your hope. What are the crosses, what are the situations in your life that made you go home? They made you walk back where you shouldn't be. Made you maybe backslide and not go to the direction that God has placed you to be at. What are the crosses? What are the dreams that did not come to pass? That you were hoping that things were going to be certain way. Expectations that were going to be your way. But they didn't happen your way. And maybe today you are walking. Some of the people on the road of disappointment. Maybe some further, some earlier. So all of us have those crosses. The cross of our hope. Cross of our dreams and cross of our faith. And they are walking disappointed because Jesus died. And we have nowhere to look forward to. We left all of our lives. We forsook everything. We give up everything just to be with him. But he is gone. And when he is gone, our hope is gone. Our future is gone and seemed like there is nothing to look forward to except the cross that's behind us. And these guys are walking and they are, they are reasoning it and they are on this seven mile walk from Jerusalem. Nobody really knows where the city is at. It's not even on the map. It's somewhere lower. They are settling for a lower lifestyle. They are walking. They are doubting. This road is a road of disappointment, discouragement, despair, depression. Because things that happen in your life, how you plan them to be. And you are walking and you're reasoning with your friends. But Jesus does something amazing. He draws closer to them and he begins to conversate and he begins to ask them, what are you guys talking about? What's going on? What is it saying that God is concerned about the things that are happening in your life? Jesus did not reveal himself for one reason. Because he wanted to hear out their doubts. He wanted to hear out the heart. What are they doubting about? And they begin to say, are you the new kid on the block? Don't you know what just happened? Our hero was crucified. We had to say goodbye to our hero. He is gone and our hope is gone with him. And they begin to tell Jesus about Jesus as though Jesus wasn't there. Jesus was right at the cross that they are doubting about. And they begin to pour his heart to Jesus. And Jesus says this. Don't you know that he was supposed to be crucified? He's supposed to die from the prophets. Promises in the Bible that you 
were re not reading, but, but that you heard from the Moses that he was supposed to be crucified, that he may enter to a great, greater glory. I want to remind you, encourage you today that Jesus has not missed a single event in your life. When you feel like he was gone, he was nowhere near, he is right there with you. God is so much into you that you have no imagination and we can't even comprehend how much God loves us. How much he is on your side. And the Bible says, and um, let me read it to you so you guys don't think I make it up. Um, Matthew 10, 30. But even every hairs on your head are all numbered. I want you to pay attention. They're not counted, they're numbered. So whichever hair, hair falls out, he knows which number fell out. He is so into you. He is not against you, he is for you. And he is concerned about the things that you are disappointed. He is concerned about the things that you have lost. He is concerned about the hope that have died at the crosses in your life. Maybe it was a, a family member that passed away. Maybe it's a sickness that you didn't get healed from. Maybe it's a relationship that was broken. Maybe somebody just walked out on you. Maybe it's your parents' divorce or something that has crossed your hope out. And he is concerned and he has not missed a single event in your life. And he is walking. And it said that he was not revealed to them. They were so discouraged that they couldn't even see that it was Jesus next to them. They were so blinded that they couldn't even see that it was him. Like blind Bartimaeus, he is screaming to Jesus, just because you are blind doesn't mean God doesn't see you. Just because you don't see God in your situations, it doesn't mean God is blind as well. God is not discouraged at the crosses in your path. He knows exactly what happened in your life. And Jesus begins to unveil, unfold the scriptures and says, this is what happened to him. He's supposed to be crucified. He's supposed to die that the Jerusalem, that the Israel will be saved. Who you are dictates what you see. Jesus was a good leader. Jesus was a shepherd. Jesus was a father. And he began to tell his disciples, these doubting men, he began to tell them, this is the big picture. And a lot of times we are disappointed and we are discouraged because we see the small black detail on the picture. And we don't see the big picture of Jesus Jesus crucifixion. We don't see the big picture of the crosses on your, in your life and in my life. And Jesus began to unveil and begin to tell them that this is, a, this is an amazing moment for Jesus because this is the first time that these men are walking and they don't know that it's Jesus walking because all their life they walked with Jesus. So they know what Jesus was like and what he was doing and anything like that. But this time Jesus has an opportunity. And he begins to tell them the promises in the Bible of prophets when they were prophesying about, about his resurrection. And this is a time where Jesus is teaching them to believe the promise when you don't see him. To trust him when you have no sight of him. And this is why Jesus begins to pour out the word of God upon their life. To say, I want you to trust me when you don't see me next to you. Just because you don't see me doesn't mean I am not there with you. Can you trust him when you don't feel him, when you don't see him, when you don't see his hand healing, when you don't see his hand multiplying the bread, or when you don't see his hand opening the eyes? Can you still trust him when you don't feel nothing in your life? And they are discouraged that they don't even see him. And Jesus began to open their eyes. He begins to open their eyes through the scriptures, through the word, because a lot of times God might not be there, but his word will be there. And this is the time where they are looking for answers they're looking for answers and they're reasoning but Jesus wants them to know the answer which is himself the truth himself they're looking for truth what happened to him where where has he gone and Jesus wants to reveal the truth to them they're walking in the road and it was seven mile walk and at the end of the road it was almost as in the Bible said it was almost end of the day and they invite him in they wanted to continue conversation, conversation with him. They invite him in. Jesus, he insisted that he was going to keep walking by himself, but they know they insisted that he was going to be invited in. I want to tell you one thing that God is never going to force himself into your life. 
He is never going to come storming through your doors. Like I have some cousins. They don't even knock. They just think like it's their house. Right away to the refrigerator. Rude. They never, <laughs> you know, America guys. Um, God is never going to do that in your life. What he's going to do, he's going to walk with you on the road where you're discouraged, where you're disappointed. And he's just going to feed you with his promises. And he's going to stir up an appetite inside of you that you will let him in by yourself. He is never, he is a gentleman. And a gentleman, he stands and he knocks. He doesn't force himself into your life. And they invite him in. I want you to show that um, he said in Revelation 3.30, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Back in the college days, I took painting classes and I failed all of them. But this painting taught me a big lesson. Um, William Holman Hunt. He was the first um, painter that had to paint this picture called The Light of the World. And so he painted it like in 1851. He it took him like five years to paint this picture. And before his big show in the museum, he called his friends and family, close friends and family, and he wanted to show the painting. And they were all like made fun of him because they're like five years and you still didn't finish your painting. Like what's going on, dude? And he set them down because he, they said that this door is missing a doorknob. Like, come on, every door has a doorknob from both sides. And so he began to explain to them, he's like, no, this door is different. This door is your heart and your heart only has a one side doorknob. It only has a one side that you, it's your choice what you open your heart to. God is never going to come storming in and opening the door or whatever doing whatever you think he's going to be doing. It's your choice to open the, your heart to him. And this is a perfect picture. And ever since then, every painter, um, they copied him off. If you Google it, all the paintings of Jesus knocking at the door, there's no doorknobs. And we became very famous for, for that specific reason. And so just to remind that Jesus, he is knocking at your door. And you can ignore him and it's totally fine. But it is your choice to let him in. It is your choice for you to let Holy Spirit in because he wants to dine with you. He already stirred up your appetite through certain healing. There's certain things that he's done in your life, but he will never come in in your life forcefully. It is your choice and my choice to invite the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus, when he is walking on the road with those, he is a stranger. I don't know if you've ever been in your life through a situation when God becomes a stranger and he talks to you and you don't even recognize that it's his voice. But Jesus wants to reveal himself to you. When he is invited into your house, this is what it said. And he took the bread and he broke it. When he was sitting and eating a dinner with them and he took the bread and he broke it and their eyes were open and they saw that it was Jesus himself. Jesus is going to reveal himself when you invite him in. And this is, I want to encourage and I want to urge you to spend the time with Holy Spirit because this is where he desires and he wants to reveal himself. I can only imagine Jesus walking in the road and he is wanted to show himself to them. I can only imagine how much he desired for their eyes to be open, but he had to be invited into the house. He had to be invited into their life for, the, for him to be revealed. And today I want to encourage you that you begin to spend time with the Holy Spirit because he longs to be wanted in your life. He longs to be needed in your life. When their eyes are open, this is what it said. I love it. It said that, and they said to one another, didn't our hearts burn within us when he talked with us on the road? And they got their passion back. They got their hopes back. They got their dreams back. They got their vision for their future back. Because he opened their eyes. When we begin to commune with the Holy Spirit, there is something begins to happen in our hearts. Our hearts begin to burn. When Moses, and the, now they're realizing that the road of seven miles that we just walk with him, it was a holy ground. Because when God encounters Moses and there is a burning bush, he said, take your shoes off because where you are at, it is a holy ground. They begin to recognize it was him all this time. And when you give your life to Christ, 
And he begins to reveal yourself and you begin to see that it was him. All your life when you are doubting, when you were in depression, when you were suicidal, when you had problems in your body, it was all this time he was walking through your whole entire life. He is not missing a single second in your life. He is not missing a single hair that is falling out of your head. He is with you at all times, even when you see him and when you don't see him. And today he wants to walk with you because he wants your heart to burn again. Maybe there was dreams or there's a purpose that you have in your life and it's gone now because you were doubting because of the crosses or the things that have happened in your life. And he wants your heart to burn again. I love what it says. It says, when their hearts were burning again, so they rose up and the very hour returned back to Jerusalem. It's late night time. They just walk the whole day. But because their hearts are burning, they're going back to where they should be. They're going back to the place where Jesus said, you go and you wait for me because my presence, because I will come again in Jerusalem. God touches your life for a reason that you can go back to your Jerusalem where he has called you to be at. He is drawing your heart that you invite him in that you can go back to Jerusalem. Let me tell you what Jerusalem is. Jerusalem is a place of promise in Acts 1 4 and being assembled together with them he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father which he said that you have heard from me Jerusalem is where God has promised where your life will be it's where he is going to come and encounter your life and it's your dreams, it's your hopes, it's the things that you hope for. It's, the th it's a place where it seemed like you just had the cross. It seemed like the place is already crossed out because there's already been death. How can I go back to the places where things have died? But God says, I want you to stay in spite of what happened. In spite of the events that have happened in your life, I want you to stay with me because I am coming back again in a greater glory. Don't leave my place of promise. Don't leave my word because I have promised you that I'm coming back in a greater glory. In spite of what you feel, in spite of what you already saw, back there that you return to your Jerusalem it's a place a promise where he has promised that your dreams will come back again where your marriage will be restored where where your career where your business will bloom again that you get to the place of promise when you don't feel anything and when you don't see anything second it's a place of presence in Acts in the, um, chapter 2 said the Holy Spirit will come and he will baptize them with the power and they will be speak, uh, speaking in tongues. Jerusalem is a place of promise and presence where you begin to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Well this is a place where God wants you to experience his presence because in his presence every mountain melts like wax. Every doubt, every storm in your life will be silenced in his presence. And maybe today you are on the road of seven miles. He wants you to get back into his presence. He wants you to get back into the closet where you first found him, where you first saw his healing, where you first saw his hand touching your life. He wants you to get back into his presence because in his presence, he begins to reveal himself. In his presence, he revealed and opened their eyes for them to see that he is the Messiah, that he is the risen one. Before all that, they were all doubting. In your presence, in his presence, this is where your 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 doubts will vanish. This is where in your in his presence, your dreams will be resurrected. This is in your presence, you'll begin to live again. You will begin to have your purpose. And second of all, third of all, it's purpose. Jerusalem is promise, presence, and purpose. Acts um, chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive the power when the Holy has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. He's commanded them to stay in Jerusalem. Never believe that place because it's a place of, of um, promise, presence and purpose. That at Jerusalem you will find your purpose again. I know you lost it at the cross. I know you were so disappointed because you had to say goodbye to your hero. 
But you go back there into your prayer closet. You go back there and you begin to spend time with Him because you will find your purpose again. Even when you felt like it was gone. Even when you felt like it's gone, it's dead, it's long time buried. Don't worry, don't touch it because it's going to sink. No, He said, go back to Jerusalem. And today, maybe your dreams have died. Maybe the things that, you know, you moved here from another state or you switched churches and you were so excited because these hungry gen people, they were going someone great and something along the road happened in your life that you begin to lose focus. You begin to be discouraged. Disappointments come when you begin to look at a different picture than you should be looking at. Disappointments come when you begin to have expectations and they're not met and something happened and you begin to lose your fire and you begin to pack your bags yes you're still coming to church yes we'll still see you but we don't see you at your prayer closet Jesus no longer sees you in his presence Jesus no longer sees you at his promise at his word when you used to highlight and date and everything because God used to speak to you but not anymore nobody sees that in your life anymore you're still walking you're still coming to church but there's no life on inside of you there's no fire burning on the inside of you today I want to encourage you that you go back let God stir up your heart once again that you go back and you begin to unpack your bags because this is your life this is what he got called you for he said that you will be my witnesses this is your purpose you can't live your purpose unless you know unless you know his promise for your life and unless you begin to spend time in his presence in his presence where you will find your life again in his presence where your fire will begin to burn again and God is calling you today come back to Jerusalem Jerusalem is your home it's not your homies it's not the crowds that led you into drugs and sin it's Jerusalem that's going to restore your life because I am coming back and I am coming to a place of Jerusalem and if I am coming to the place of Jerusalem and you are ne not there you are going to be you're going to miss out for the very reason that I died for and, and it is for you to be my witnesses for you to witness the power that you have seen in your life for you to witness what you have seen in your in my presence that you have seen my face and this is what I want you to tell people what you have seen in the presence amen and God is calling us today that you come back home he's asking you he is longing to be wanted he longs to be wanted in your life amen